What's up, y'all? This is Nina Perez, and this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. Thank you guys for chilling with us today. You know I love to be on here with you. Make sure that you share, subscribe, like, all that great stuff so that we can keep growing this amazing community because you know I go around this amazing planet finding the best human beings I can find to come on here to grow, challenge, and transform your thinking. And today I am so thrilled because I have a mad verse here with us and he's a seasoned expert with over 30 years in military and federal leadership development. I love that. And I can't wait to get into that with you. My, my husband is a vet, so I'm loving this already. And he specializes in coaching veterans through career transition and advancement. And his unique approach not only navigates the complexities of the job market, but it also champions inclusive workplaces. So let's dive into this and let's discover what Ahmad has here for us. Um, so thank you for hanging out with us and thank you for reaching out to Straight Talk. I love having conversations with like real people that are out there doing some good stuff. So I am glad you're here. How are you doing today? I'm fine. And before we begin, I just like to say I, I, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. But I'm not sure if anyone's told you, but you have such a great presence. Oh, Honestly, thank you. you just kinda, <laughs> I appreciate like, that. You can, you can feel the energy coming right off of you. So just saying <laughs> it's too much for some people. It's too much for some people, but I really appreciate you saying that. I do have a lot of energy. My husband says the same thing. He's like, what is going on? I'm like, I don't know. It's ADHD. I don't know what to tell you. So <laughs> I'm mad. I'm really glad you're here. And so I want to start off like I always start off, right? I have an amazing audience um, and they are always like uh, DMing me and emailing me and commenting on the great people that I have here. So I want to know a little bit more about you. So let's start there. Who are you? Who are you? Well, my name is Ahmad Burst and I guess you'll get more into it as we go through uh, this podcast. But uh, I was in the military for 23 years. I got out. Uh, after getting out, I found employment. After finding employment, I realized that I wanted to provide more. I wanted to give mm. back more. I wanted to have a greater impact. So then I became a, a, a corporate coach for veterans, um, specifically veterans who are transition in that transition process, because that can be very frustrating. And it, it's a time where the veteran themselves are vulnerable. So then mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. what I do uh, in regards mm -hmm. to the diversity, equity, inclusion side. Uh, a lot of agencies don't have veterans um, employee resource groups. So I kind of advocate for that. Uh, not that veterans are this this group that's outside the norm. However, they have unique challenges. Challenges. Yeah. And a lot of times I don't think people understand what those challenges are. And maybe they may come out in a way that doesn't uh, necessarily shine right for the veteran or the company may have their reservations about bringing this person on. So that's kind of like in a light nutshell of me. Wow, that's great. And, uh, you know, I'm glad you're being a voice for the veterans out there, too, because you're right. There is a unique set of challenges. My father was a vet as well. He passed away many years ago, but he was in uh, Vietnam and he came back with a lot of challenges, right? A lot of challenges. So um, tell me a little bit about what got you into the military to begin with. Was that something that you've always aspired to do or were, were you a, a, a kid that was getting into trouble and you had to get put into the military? Tell me a little bit about that story. So then before I get into it, I want to just <laughs> talk about what you just said. Can you imagine a time in, you know, society where if you weren't doing what you're supposed to do, they tell you to go to war, go to jail. Right. I mean, can you just think, I mean, just think about that. Like, yes. hey, listen, uh, you can either uh, sign on a line and you're going to go to the military or you're going to jail. I mean, like, That's that right. is deep. I don't know if I could have dealt with that, but, <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, no, that wasn't the case. My mom and dad both were in the military. Oh. And uh, the thing about it was I'd seen my mother grow uh, I was a, she was a single parent. So then I'd seen her going. She was a reservist. Uh, weekend warrior was the title at the time. And seeing her and it was kind of instilled in me. I'm an only child. Hey, listen, you, you serve your country. You know, your country's done a lot of things That's for awesome. you. Yeah. So you need to go ahead and and. Uh, serve your time. So mm -hmm. actually my military career, I would say began in ninth grade when I went to JROTC, you know, the junior, the high school. Uh -huh. ROTC. And then from there at 17, I joined 16 and a half really. And wow, I was 17 mm -hmm. and then 23 years later, uh, that's, wow. that's, that's what, and it's, it's, it's funny because 
when I joined the military, uh, it said that you know, the Army's logo or the Army's theme was be all you can be. And mm-hmm. I, I did as much stuff as I could in the military. I did, honestly. I, I would say I didn't have this super career, but I did a lot of things. Everything yeah. that I wanted to do, I did. And it's funny that now that's their motto now, be all you can be to get folks. Mm-hmm. So then that's, that's what you got know, me. I, I kind of wish that we would make all of the kids go to military, to be honest with you, right? I, I, I think because I say that because I grew up uh, also wanting to be a part of the army. I wanted to be a uh, military police officer, something I always wanted to do. Um, because I knew in my life, I needed discipline. I needed discipline in my life because I wasn't getting it at home. Um, and so when I became 18, I went to enroll. And as I was being sworn in, uh, the officer looked at me and goes, wait a minute, you have a box here that says you have a kid. I said, yeah. He goes, so you're giving up custody of your kid? I'm like, absolutely not. And he's like, well, if you don't give up custody, you can't, you can't join. So that was really hard for me, but I could not leave my kid with just anybody. So I decided not to go that route. But I say all that to say that I have so much respect for people who join the military, so much respect. I think it's because I've seen my uncles, my dad, my husband, you know what I'm saying, do uh, serve their country. And it just, it gives you a level of respect, doesn't it? It gives you a level of respect for your country or what you're fighting for. It just, I don't know, it gives you structure. Did you find that in your life as well? Like, did you find that your life maybe would have been different or your thought process would have been different had you not joined the military? Oh, most definitely. My thought processes would have been different if I would not have joined the military. And I think for me, um, and that's one of the things that's really important in working with veterans Mm -hmm. is I've met a lot of friends that have left the military and the only thing that they can, you know, reference that was a value in their lives was their time in the military. And that's unfortunate. So then, oh yeah, the military framed me for a lot of things. But at the the same time, in leaving the military, I realized that I had skill sets to be successful that just weren't from the military. Mm -hmm, You you understand? mm -hmm. Because like whenever I left, that's like my main thing was I didn't want the military to be, you know, like the reference point for my life because that's what happens with so many people. And it's it's not, you know, it may be, you know, for some folks they got injured or something or something occurred, and so that's you know that's their reference point. It's like you know everything from that point stopped. And I didn't want that to be that. I didn't want that for me, but oh yeah, the military changed. I mean, it it exposed me to a lot of things, but I I guess also the thing about it is like, I joined to serve my country, but also I was like, I want to travel the world, um, single Mm -hmm. parent, you know, you're not, I don't have the money flowing in. So I I have to come up with a better solution if I want to get around Germany and uh, well, Bosnia, Hungary, I've done a lot of things. And right. I'm not saying that I couldn't have done it without the military, but it might have just taken me a little bit more time. Yeah, it, yeah, it's absolutely. Just interesting, it, it, you know, how it's a positive, but, you know, and I think you still have to sign. You, you're not allowed to join if you're a single parent. But when my mother got pregnant with me, when she was in the military, they kicked her out. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, no, and that's, and it was like, and me and her have had those conversations. It's like, wow. It's like, really? It's like, yeah, they just said, hey, you got to go. It's like, yeah. wow. I see, right. I know. It's unfortunate. Yeah. 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 They're definitely, they definitely changed. They're changing. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're not going to get into that, but yeah, they're changing. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> so tell me a little bit about uh, why you got into doing what you're doing, because you're, you're really helping, um, you know, vets with transitioning. So was this something that you wanted to do when you got out of the military? Or was it something that you kind of just realized there was a need for? Well, um, I will say this, uh, whenever I left them, the last, the last unit I was in was a warrior transition battalion. So then the warrior transition battalion helped transition wounded and ill soldiers. Cause, uh, it was during the time OEF and, or, you know, Afghanistan, uh, enduring freedom and Iraqi mm-hmm. freedom were, were, were kind of, you know, they were in full tilt. And so you had a lot of injured and wounded soldiers. So, once they came to the battalion, uh, they assessed them to find out, okay, all right, are you going to be able to um, heal and then get back into, you know, go back to the fight? Or are you going to, you know, end up having to transition because of your injuries? And we were a part of the care team. 
Uh, and, and that mm -hmm. it's just such a different like when you get a soldier who um, and it was just they were in bad situations like you, you get blown up in daggone Afghanistan. You come home, you know, you find out your spouse has, you know, stepped out. I mean, we're right. talking real. So that's no, that's real. Right. So, yeah. And, and, you know, your kids are somewhere with, this, with, you know, with your best friend and your spouse. And, you know, you, you meet a person who is broken, both physically and mentally. Yeah. And then you you provide care to them and you, you bring them back. It's like, hey, listen, you know, and that was part of the things that we did. And it really changed how I looked at things. Um, we did a good job trying to help transition, so help soldiers transition. So then it, it it showed me like a blueprint to how I needed to transition. Um, it gave me, I had about 90 days, not 90 days, but I say it was about 90 days because once I found out, once I decided to say, hey, listen, I'm leaving the military, my chain of command supported me. And it's like, okay, all right. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. And, you, and, and it allowed me to leave. Uh, although when I transitioned, it was still a battle because, hey, you mm -hmm. got to find gainful employment. Hey, you have this family here. Um, what are you going to do? How are you going to support them? So I, I think the, the main thing that in, in helping so helping people transition is that, you know, I'm, I'm giving them a real world. Hey, listen, I understand that you, you're telling me that when you go back home that, you know, your Uncle Phil has a job for you and, you know, he's been holding it, you know, for, you know, all this time. But that's that's pretend because the real deal is you better have you a good plan. And one mm -hmm. of the things I always talk, if you have the ability, take 90 days of leave if you can. And, and the purpose of that is for you to kind of like uh, for you to to kind of decompress um, because in the military, you're constantly moving. You're constantly, right. constantly moving. So things that you don't have the opportunity to kind of process things. Like, uh, you know, uh, I've had soldiers try and commit suicide, um, death, uh, you know, broken relationships. You don't process them. When you get out of the military, that trauma is still there. Right. And now that there's no reason for you not to process it, those things start coming up. Another part about it is, you know, for intensive purpose, for all purposes, you don't really know who you are because right. to be successful in the military, you know, honestly, all you got to do is just, I need to do A, B, C, and D, and I'll get promoted. Yep. And that's it. So right. then, you know, you kind of, you know, you're that that square that's going into the circle that's too small, and you kind of beat yourself into there to be successful. But when you leave, I mean, you're still that same person. So, you know, you have to have some kind of systems in place to allow yourself to, to kind of, you know, decompress, kind of figure out who you actually are, not the person, mm -hmm. not that representative that you were while you were in the military to be successful. So then That's there's so a lot powerful. of, yeah, there's a lot of, and you know, in talking about identity, a lot of times uh, from my experiences, military folks kind of, their identity is within their rank and their position. And it's like, you know, you get out, it's like, I don't give a explicative about who you were. I told you, to right. do whatever. you know, it's, and so like, there's a lot of that that they have to, that I had to process to then now those transition soldiers, transitioning persons have to process. Like, listen, you're not this person anymore. And frankly, they don't care. So, you know, you're gonna have to figure out better tools, better methods, um, better ideas for working with people, addressing problems. So, yes. Yeah, I'm really glad that you decided to go in this direction, this niche as well, because there, there needs to be more people like you, quite honestly. Um, I've spoken to a lot of coaches, a lot, right? I've been doing this for many years. So I think I'm at like episode 300 and something. So I've spoken to a lot of people. And I don't think I've spoken to anybody yet who is coaching veterans the way you are. Which is which is really powerful, right? It's powerful because you are you are uh, in a market that is super needed, but also not really being looked at, right? So tell me about your process. So what what is your process of some is do you do you capture them before they leave the military? Do you capture them after they leave the military? Like what does your process look like? Well, and unfortunately you don't know what you don't know until you don't know and that's kind of crazy to say <laughs> but you know for a lot of folks transit for a lot of military folks are like hey i got this you know i got this and it's 
it's not until you know uh, some type of significant emotional event occurs some type of hey listen something that kind of shakes you to say hey listen i don't have this maybe i need to reach out to someone that has the skills so i'd love to talk to folks on their trend as they transition but that doesn't happen that way a lot of times folks don't want to talk after they you know during their transition you know if you i was in the military for 23 years so if you imagine you know i had three months i had time to transition but that's 23 years of memories that you're cramming in the 90 days right like where right. if you know where are you staying at do you have a house you know um what just your finances just a lot of things that your mind isn't there and then it may not be there until you have to look at it so then i mean you know that's that's part of it but that's your story as a transitioning veteran. I mean, you're going right. to get through this. However, you know, sometimes you just got to, that, that might be the way to learn. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So then, and that's the, the average human being, the average person is not going to probably have the foresight to kind of look at things and say, Hey, well, what if I don't get this? Well, what if this doesn't happen? Oh no. And it's going to happen that way because, you know, I'm doing this and doing that because you can do all the right things. But then, right. You know, of course. Can occur and it's just like that one thing. And it's like funny, they say, you know, uh, the average person is a paycheck away from, you know, bankruptcy or losing their home. Well, that's the same, same thing for military folks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yep. honestly, it's, it, that's that just, hey, just because you're in the military doesn't mean that you got, um, uh, you know, it doesn't mean like you have these unlimited finances and everything right. running off the No, that's not the case. So right. it's just, you know, realizing, and, and that's another thing, I think, uh, in talking about identity, you know, I don't think when I transitioned, I believed that life was real. And it's like when you get out, it's like, oh, man, this is real. Like people are struggling, like people are having challenges, like mm -hmm. and when mm -hmm. you're out of that environment for so long, it's, it can be a culture shock. I'm sure. I mean, 23 years is a long time, right? And you were used to a certain regimen, a certain schedule, a certain, you know, uh, way of doing things. So that must have been like really shocking, I would think, right? Like when you're walking out and now you're a civilian, it's all different, right? You're not really reporting to anybody per se, you know, you don't really have um, the structure in place. You know, now you got to get work because the military is not paying you. So there's a, there's a lot of a lot of things that happen. Right. Um, and I know that, you know, for people in my family who were in the military also had the added benefit of, of being, of uh, being an addict. Right. Yeah. So there was, there was that as well. Right. And so there's a lot of moving pieces here. Now, when somebody calls you Ahmed and wants to, wants to work with you, is it like, is it like a coaching program? Like, is it like a few months? Is it just a, a week? Are you just helping them find services? How, how is it that you're helping these uh, vets? It's 90 days. Uh, and, oh, okay. But the thing about it is it just, you know, that initial conversation I found on, you know, what do you want? Because things kind of evolve into, you know, you may say you want to do A, B, C, and D, but you may not be aware that you have, you know, E, F, and G options. So it's right. talking and making sure it's like, hey, and I think, uh, you know, for a lot of people, and just mentoring folks, you know, if you've been out there and you're not able to get to where you need to go, you kind of lose your confidence because this is, I mean, it's not, it is, is it, it is a challenge when you're, you know, you, you are very much regimented and all you have to do is this. And then you get out and it's like, I remember one of, one of my friends, uh, and she was angry. She was extremely angry when she got out because she's like, no one told me how to wear heels. No one told me how to wear dresses. And it's like, cause she had been in, you know, for 20 something years. So, you know, wow. her young life, she, as an, as a, you know, a teenager in her early twenties, she's in the military. So she's just wearing uniforms and then she gets out and, you know, she doesn't know how to, you know, wear, she doesn't know how to purchase a, a professional suit. She doesn't understand about, you know, what, what jewelry you wear and you don't wear during an interview or, you know, how do you present yourself? And it's, wow. it's, that's just, and you know, people just don't think about it. Never you know, thought of that. Yeah. I never thought yeah. of that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So then right. it's just like little, and that's what you, that's what you have someone like me for. Uh, I remember I put a posting on LinkedIn, um, the importance of your parents, you know, for a man and for a woman, but a suit, a suit is your armor. A suit speaks for you. And, uh, and teaching folks how to interview is like, 
even if you're on a telephonic interview and it's not Zoom, get dressed in your suit and stand up because yeah. people can hear that during the interview. And it's just yep. like little things that, that, that folks aren't aware of. It's, it sounds weird, but you can tell. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. just wearing that, like for me, wearing a suit was like putting on a Superman outfit and it just gave me confidence. And that's, you know, giving folks that confidence, that that um, that nudge to say, hey, listen, you got it. You, get, you can do this. These are some things you need to kind of work on so you can make sure that they understand that you can do it. Now, does does the um, does the military or anybody uh, that maybe you knew in the military or anything, you know, talk to these people coming out, talk to the, the, the people transitioning about services like yours? Or are you pretty much out there looking for your own clients? Like, I was just wondering, you know, if what you do can be a part of the service that they give people transitioning. You know what I mean? Does that, does that make sense? Well, and I know in the Army and I think in the other services, there's a program called the Transition Assistance Program. It's TAP. Okay. And, okay. And they provide services, but, um, you know, that the TAP program is like a week long, if that. So once oh. again, you got 23 years. <laughs> right. So, and, you know, so you want to combine all that into a week. So then they had another service, Hire Here is USA. Um, uh, that, those are the folks that I went, they came to our agency and they gave us like interviewing skills, like how to write your resume, uh, things of that nature. And that, and that's, you know, that was outside of the, the Army's contracted stuff, but they were excellent. They came and, um, you know, I, I kudos to them because mm -hmm. I, I tell you, those, those folks kind of helped me. This is what you've done. This is the way this resume needs to transfer to get this is what you want. Mm -hmm. so, um, mm -hmm. it, it's a, I had a lot of different I had a lot of good. I would say I had a lot of good experiences and just a lot of blessings that came my way. I'm, I'm, and mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for it. So. Yeah, well, I mean, you're now being a blessing to others, right? I mean, you're being yeah. a blessing to people who need who need that support and that help. And, and you, like you said, you can't do it in a week. It is, you just, you can't. I mean, no. you can't. Nothing in life, really, when you're going through any transition in life, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't take a week. That's so, it makes me laugh because how did they even think that was a good idea? Like, well, I don't see, know. <laughs> well, see, like, but to see the, the thing about it is it's like, um, so then for a lot of agencies, so then the, the transition, when I was in the military, uh, the, the transition assistance program, you, it was mandatory that you attend. And if you didn't attend, leadership would get in trouble, but you can attend up to 90 days before you. The goal is you, you go there for that week, 90 days before, and then, you know, a couple weeks before you actually transition, you go twice. So that way, the first time you can get everything rolling and the next time you can but, you know, at the time we were deploying, I mean, there was always something, yeah. uh, they always needed people. And then if you're deploying all the time, you know, they're not trying to hear anything about you trying to get out. So it was just a lot of, um, and then, you know, unfortunately, once you're out, you're out. It's like, hey, hey, thanks a lot. Uh, peace, mm -hmm. one love. And, you yeah. know, and I think that that's one of the things that I was aware of when I left and, Whenever I talk to people, I let them know, hey, it's the same everywhere you go. It's like, if, if you know, if, uh, like if you're working at a job and you get fired, you know, next week, they won't remember you that month. They'll have someone replacing you. So that's some of the things you got to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. You know, that this isn't one of those because it was a challenge for me because uh, I kind of held the value. So loyalty to the organization and I'm at this job and these folks aren't loyal. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I bet it is interesting. So, you know, for those who are listening, right. Cause I, I have a lot of leaders and entrepreneurs, CEOs and stuff that listen to the show. Mm -hmm. And I know that we all know someone we do who has served or is serving or about to leave. And so, um, I, I, from what I'm gathering is you're helping them kind of navigate from when they come out to what the real expectations in the world is going to look like. Oh, yeah. Um, right. That's what it sounds like you're, you're doing with them. So I'm just wondering um, if somebody is listening right now and, and want to contact you or have somebody work with you, you know, how do they do that? How do they get in contact with you? How do they call you work with you? All that kind of stuff. Well, they can reach me on, uh, at my LinkedIn, they can look for me on LinkedIn. I'm the only mm -hmm. I'm at first. 
there's a picture there's a bald-headed african-american male that's <laughs> tilted sideways smiling at you that's that's me um <laughs> and <laughs> and uh <Okay. laughs> so or they can reach me at www.burstconsulting.com okay and either one of those has the link to my calendar uh, and contact information so they can just reach out to me uh, and then I'll get you on my calendar and we'll go from there. That's great. That's really great. I'm really glad that you're doing what you're doing. Um, and I, I, you know, I really hope that people who are listening understands the value of what you're, you're doing, because I think that is, you know, again, you know, having military in my family, um, I, I saw the struggle. There was a lot of struggle. Um, well, and yeah, go ahead. I, I just want because uh, you had said in, in regards to struggle, I put a LinkedIn, I, po I post on LinkedIn, and I said there are three things that every veteran needs when they transition. And number one mm -hmm. is they have a, a coach or a mentor. Uh, number two, they need to have a team, a squad, meaning you mm -hmm. know folks they can talk to. But the most important thing is they need to have a counselor or mental health professional. Yeah. And I think you know it's it's finally we finally are getting that. Hey, listen. Uh, I'm going to tell you, if you've been in Army a year or 25 years, you have some type of trauma. It's, mm -hmm, it's either, mm -hmm. I mean, from the initial process of coming into the military or shooting guns or throwing grenades, you have some type of trauma. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm not being funny. And you I need to that. seek, I, I recommend you seek mental health because it may not be that there's, something necessarily wrong with the system there might be something going on with you that mm -hmm. you're unaware of and, and you, you see it time and time again it's like you're super angry or your uh your, your affect is you don't have an affect you're just like there numb mm -hmm. you know there's there might be something going on that whole separation process from the military is is a death um and mm -hmm. so but yeah that's all i wanted to say i wanted to you know if you're a military person go ahead and seek mental health don't don't yeah. be around the bush don't go kicking around, you know, wasting years. People waste decades of their lives I know. in a funk and can't figure it out. And it's because you're dealing with some trauma. And right. there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Talk to someone, please. Yeah. I was just going to say that. There's no shame in that. No. There is no shame in that. And, um, and, you know, like I said, you know, watching some people in my family turn to substance abuse and all that kind of stuff that never really dealt with the issues. Right. And, um, I always wanted that for them because I knew that it was, uh, it was, I mean, if I could see it on the outside, I can imagine what the storm is on the inside, you know? Absolutely. Uh, so yeah. So I'm really, you know, thank you so much for, for coming on straight talk and for being a straight talker. And for uh, helping, you know, helping our vets out there, they need you. So I really appreciate your time. I appreciate your wisdom. And I'm, you know, I'm really grateful that you showed up today. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So and thank you for your service. 100%. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much. I knew that you would like him. Ahmed is really amazing. And I want to make sure that you follow him. So I'm going to link all of his information below. Um, make sure that you guys reach out because if you are out here and you're transitioning or you're thinking of transitioning out of military into you know being a civilian, and it's really, it's not um, that it's uh, so impossible that you can't do it, but sometimes we just need that little bit of support to Absolutely. help us get through. And there's nothing wrong with that. Stop being a tough guy or tough girl, you know, because you're in the military, so you got to be tough. You don't. There is a lot of strength and vulnerability. There's a lot of strength and vulnerability. So when somebody is out here who has the experience, who has been there, who has transitioned, who is out here helping you, you guys got to take advantage of the help. Thank you guys so much for being here. I love you so much. This is Nina Perez, Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. Until next time.